Why do you have to uh, talk about the National Library of uh, Scotland, uh, historic maps? And, uh, Just look at these. The preamble is mainly a, a sort of visual preface to what I had to say, so they'll only miss the preamble because uh, Bobby invited me last year to speak at the State of the, the Map 2012 meeting, and so I was keen to cover new ground by talking about the uh, updates really within the last year. And uh, really, we have a number of links with the OpenStreetMap community. Uh, we use OpenStreetMap as an important layer uh, to find and retrieve uh, historic maps, as I'll demonstrate. Uh, but we also supply background layers of historical georeference mapping within the uh, Potlatch and Josson editors, and we're keen to extend those in the future. In addition, through our um, connections and offers from OpenStreetMappers, we've been able to get some of our historic <coughs> maps georeferenced as a collaborative exercise. So we did scans of the original maps to OpenStreetMappers. They can georeference them, pass the results back to us, and we both make the results available within OpenStreetMap and within NLS. And so most of what I have to say really looks very much at historical mapping. And uh, if we, for example, plunge back through time for this area, historical maps have a, a great value. Uh, air photos, for example, from the 1940s, we georeferenced on our, our website. We can plunge back to an ordnance survey, six inch to the mile map for the 1890s for this area. And keep going further back in time still, in the mid 19th century, 62 towns in Scotland were surveyed at unprecedented levels of detail, interiors of public buildings, flagpoles in back gardens, and even the position of freestanding trees. And uh, these maps provide a really uh, detailed insight into urban Scotland a century and a half ago. <coughs> But before that too, there's a very long history of map making. This is 1804, John Ainsley map of Edinburgh and Lee. And uh, further back in time still, a 1780s map uh, by Alexander Kincaid. So our, our maps, whilst they cover all periods of time, illustrate particular subjects in different ways. Ordnance survey maps provide great detail for the last century uh, and a half. But before that, there are important maps really dating over the last 400 years, covering Scotland at different levels of detail. The first detailed survey of Scotland by someone directly recording the landscape took place over 400 years ago. A chap called Timothy Pont surveyed perhaps all of mainland Scotland, leaving these these manuscript maps that are one of our earliest map treasures, showing detail of, of towns and rural settlements. And his maps were brought together in the first atlas of Scotland by Johan Blau, published in Amsterdam in 1654. We also find that there are an important phase of military maps in Scotland, particularly in the first half of the 18th century very much the response to Jacobite rebellions in the Highlands and uh, things like battle plans. And the outcome of all this was a very detailed military survey of Scotland uh, under the superintendence of William Roy between 1747 and 1755. But we also have a long history of nautical charts this is the first Admiralty chart of the first the fourth, providing quite a lot of good coastal information for harbours and, uh, and areas adjacent to the sea. Estate maps, this is Ascent in the 1780s. And uh, really what I'd like to do uh, today following this uh, preamble is look first of all at the new Map Images website that we've launched in the last uh, year and then go on to look at the new georeferenced map layers that we created. 
we've done a, a very large listing project this year of what are called county series maps for all of England and Wales, making the results available in a new viewer. I'll describe briefly some of the technologies we've used, all open source technologies now. And our API, our historical maps API, that allows a lot of our historic maps to be consumed in other websites and as web services. Before finishing up by moving right to the present day with our modern geospatial data application. And I should say too, one of the messages I'm always keen to give in giving talks about NLS maps is that we are an international collection. We are a legal deposit library uh, with a collection of about two million paper maps and whilst over half of those relate to the UK, about a third relate to all other countries around the world. And one of the things we're always keen to do is extend the amount of, of mapping beyond Scotland, especially with georeferencing and potentially providing background layers for open street mappers in other countries. So just to launch straight on in, um, those of you who knew our website historically will know that before a year ago, we actually had two split websites, one for conventional web-based alphabetical lists and another for all of our geospatial applications, which confused everyone, including ourselves and so we brought those together just before uh, Christmas last year in a new interface which allows first of all geographic access to everything in the find by place viewer. The textual lists provide equivalent access to everything through categories, maps of Scotland, county maps, town plans. We've also got a smaller subset, not everything is georeference, mainly map series in the last 200 years and uh, a few other related applications. And I'm mainly going to illustrate our find by place viewer, the georeference maps viewer and the OS sheet records viewer just with a series of, of screen grabs. The find by uh, place, sorry I should just say, uh, in terms of um, uh, website hits, the volume of growth has changed over time, fortunately going generally upwards. In the last year, this is our Google Analytics for the map site, we've had over half a million visits on the home page, but the page views uh, number about 3.6 million. It's a busy uh, website and sustainability has been quite important. The find by place viewer, first of all, shows how it's possible to search for everything on our website, 50,000 maps, geographically, by clicking on the polygons or, um, or rectangles that show their spatial extents. And I can search using a Google Gazetteer, a county or parish drop-down, or just zoom on in to the map. Uh, these are the boundaries of Ordnance Survey 25 inch to the mile maps from the mid 19th century. I can click on uh, any polygon of interest, the thumbnails returned on this side, and then when I, I click on that, the thumbnail transforms into a zoomable image, uh, our open layers viewer, which allows you to zoom on in on the map and display it at really uh, detailed levels. I should say too, before I forget, that all of the website is free. We're very keen to allow free access to everything. Uh, but there is uh, an e-commerce module attached to the viewer, allowing people to order printouts and images and, and copies if they want to. Going back to the find by place viewer, through drop-down lists on this side, I can select other different series to display. They have different sheet lines. Um, this is the 25 inch to the mile maps from 1890s to the 1960s. The sheet lines change quite often over time. There's new meridians and so just by clicking on a location it's an easy way of returning the sheets covering that place without needing to go between different graphic indexes. 
and uh, we also allow access in this way to all the early county map sound plans and other themes. The second uh, viewer I was keen to demonstrate is, uh, is, is more fun for exploring georeference maps and it's a similar interface deliberately but the main difference is that what is displayed here is a, a seamless layer of historical mapping and I can, I can zoom on in on uh, a, a location I can choose different scales of mapping that we georeference. So if I switch here from the 1 inch to the mile map from the 1880s to the, the 6 inch, then the 6 inch will display and I can zoom on in in more detail at 6 inch. And then we have a transparency slider up here. And by sliding the, uh, the widget over to the left, this uses uh, jQuery, um, the historic layer will fade away and um, if I go uh, always in this direction it reveals whatever background layer I choose to display. It could be a Google satellite image, Bing satellite imagery, OpenStreetMap and so on. And it's, it's a really nice way, uh, enjoyable way of uh, comparing historic maps in the past with the present day. There's also this really detailed set of town plans, for example, for Stirling, where you can zoom on in into even more detail. That shows an example of them there, the interior of the uh, church and, uh, and trees and a lot of other uh, road and pavement information. Just to say a few words about the new layers uh, that uh, we georeferenced in the last year. We uh, georeferenced a very attractive layer of Bartholomew, half inch to the mile mapping from a century ago. And Bartholomew mapping uh, is chiefly, I think, known for the layer colouring of relief, a very dramatic, visually arresting uh, way of presenting relief. Uh, as well as being quite a useful set of snapshots of the landscape in between the main Ordnance Survey editions. A lot of our work has been externally funded. The amount of uh, support and money from NLS for our work, unfortunately, uh, is fairly small. But we're lucky that we've received donations in the last year from a couple of sources that have allowed us to georeference important layers of mapping, including the Ordnance Survey's one inch to the mile, uh, what was called the New Revised Series of England and Wales, covering England and Wales from just over a century ago. And uh, this has two flavours actually, what's called the Outline Edition, which is what we display uh, here, and also a very attractive Hills Edition, where the hills, the relief was uh, engraved using hashers and printed from a separate brown plate for the hasher. So very much complementing the outline view with quite a dramatic uh, presentation of relief as well. And these can be displayed and enjoyed in the Explore Georeference Map Viewer as well. And the one we've done most recently has been a really detailed five foot to the mile, or 60 inch to the mile survey of all of London from just over a century ago. And uh, like the Victorian town plans of Scotland, providing interior details of things like public buildings, uh, railway stations, especially good for railway lines as we found in terms of retweetings and postings by the model railway community found this a uh, <laughs> very enjoyable uh, layer too, but of great value again for uh, the history of London. We're very grateful to Adina, um, who were just over the road from us in Edinburgh, for providing funding for listing all the dates of detailed mapping, county mapping, 
for England and Wales. We've never had the resources to list these before. And this information is now being incorporated into a historic Digimap that you may know already has layers of mapping, but not the detailed dates for specific sheets before now. And for us, it allowed us to list all these maps for the first time, record the dates of survey and publication, and link the sheet records to shapefiles of sheet boundaries, which we received from the Charles Close Society, the main society for studying ordnance survey historic maps. And it means that we can, through our OS sheet records viewer, zoom on in for anywhere in Great Britain, click on a location and know which maps were published. Often at county boundaries, there was quite a complex history of new meridians, partly why it's this juxtaposing of the sheep lines here. And we can do this for 25 inch as well as for uh, 6 inch, see the different dates. And we also do it for more recent maps. For England and Wales, we haven't listed sheets yet, but we still have the sheep lines. And in Scotland, we've managed to list the sheets as well, so we can click on a location and know exactly which detailed OS maps were surveyed and published in the post-war period. And this um, is a very useful tool in a new service that we've launched in the last year. If you're interested in obtaining copies of in copyright ordnance survey maps, we became an OS licensed partner, which allows us to copy and scan any in copyright maps. We have to pass a £15 royalty per sheet to ordnance survey, so there is a charge, but apart from that, it means anyone can receive uh, a top quality copy of an in copyright map and, and use it for other purposes. And from the beginning of next year, Ordnance Survey will allow us to supply a geo-referenced in copyright <coughs> image as well, supplied as a geo-tip, which will uh, add to this service. And the other thing that the boundaries are very useful for is being the first stage for us in scanning the original sheets. There are actually 36,000 Ordnance Survey 6-inch to the Mars sheets covering England and Wales, just the quarter sheets, that isn't including the full sheets. And uh, we've just begun a project which we hope to scan these and make them all available uh, during the first quarter of next year and move on to, to geo-reference them too, making them available like we've done for the uh, Scottish County series. These maps are available now through the uh, landmark oldmaps.co.uk service, but it's not a great interface or quality, uh, or through Edina Digimap, which again is only available within the, the educational community. Just to say uh, a word or two about our technology, for those of you interested, we used to use ESRI, ARC, uh, IMS and ARC, uh, GIS, and we still use ArcGIS uh, on the desktop, although we do use QGIS um, as well for, for certain functions. Most importantly, we use GeoServer as a way of storing all of our, our shapefile boundaries, which provide the clickable indexes, and open layers as an interface within both the find by place, explore georeference maps and for the zoomable non-geo-reference maps as well. Just to illustrate that, this is a, a screen grab from GeoServer, which we found really nice software. Uh, it's a very intuitive, easy uh, graphical interface to incorporating shape files, organizing them, um, <coughs> customizing the color that they might uh, display with. And GeoServer is integrated as well with GeoWebCache, which uh, prepares cached versions of the shapefile for more rapid display in a dynamic environment. 
And the shapefile boundaries have been very useful as well for exposing our maps through other services. A couple of those that are most important to us are Scotland's Places, a very useful portal to historical resources in the Royal Commission, the National Records of Scotland and uh, in NLS that have a, a geographic or topographic content. And also we've made the boundaries available within a website called Old Maps Online, which if you don't know, it is a, a very useful portal to historical maps. It's now the world's largest portal to historical maps, gathering records from about 20 large map libraries around the world and by a Google-like slippy map interface you can zoom in and pan on any location and the relevant maps that best match the area you're interested in are continually displayed on the side. IIP image we just used from about six months ago. Uh, it's a very, very fast way of delivering JPEG 2000 images, and we used to use proprietary Mr. Sid images for our non geo reference maps. We moved to JPEG 2000, and this delivers things through an open layers interface that has been much faster than the old proprietary server we used to use. Map Tyler we've used for many years as a, a way of preparing large geo reference mosaics for the web, uh, great software. Uh, to use. And just to say too, we have a, a wiki page on uh, the OpenStreetMap website which provides information on the historic layers that we've made uh, available for OpenStreetMap editing, the addresses of those. As I mentioned, we've collaborated. Whenever uh, we found someone willing, we've managed to encourage them to collaborate with us, and we found an Irish open street mapper a couple of years ago, geo-referenced a couple of very nice layers of historical mapping for Ireland, uh, which we didn't have the resources to do uh, ourselves, but was a, a useful um, project for us both. We're in the process of changing our historic tile sets. We've used uh, the OSGO tile map service format and we're moving in the future to a new format so um, if you do use our services then do uh, stay tuned we'll provide information on the new addresses for those but most importantly we're planning to extend our historical maps api to include other layers in future this uh, application was launched in 2010 and it provides a set of historic maps for the 1920s for Great Britain that scales from 1 to 1 million to 1 inch to the mile if you zoom on in through the different layers and they can just be embedded in any other website used as a backdrop used rather like OpenStreetMap or, or Google Maps in other applications. We're very keen to keep this a free service but due to the demand for other historic map layers uh, particularly over time, the um, historical maps API has, has grown, and we, we have uh, nearly a, a million visits in the last year, nearly two million page views. And the growing number of councils and other bodies um, around the UK using our historic maps as layers, which is great, but it has uh, overheads to maintain. This is uh, the John Gray Centre in East Lothian, which provides a very nice portal using current maps and other uh, historic maps from the NLS website as a backdrop to their historic environment record information. And a similar application uh, in East Sussex archives, uh, both of these customised by a company called Orange Leap, uh, hence the, the similarity in the uh, interface there. And we hope that. Uh, in the new year, in 2014, we'll make available a lot more layers, perhaps on a small subscription basis. It won't be a, a high charge, but a small charge to maintain and hopefully grow the services in future. Finally, 
As a legal deposit library, we receive ordnance survey mapping, and from 1998, they no longer supplied these maps on paper, they supplied them digitally. And the digital data is great, we get an annual snapshot every year of landline as it used to be, or master map from 2006. We can't do a lot with it, unfortunately. Very strict uh, controls from Ordnance Survey. Uh, we're allowed to display it in our reading room, provide A4 paper extracts only, and not really a lot else, but it is a very useful uh, way of viewing modern uh, OS master map if you're uh, able to visit uh, NLS. And we're in the process now of moving all this to a new application and this is because just this year there's been an extension to legislation for digital map publications, which mean that digital map publications need to be deposited with large legal deposit libraries such as ours. And in the future this will mean we can ingest and hopefully archive data sets, not to make them available on our website, but only to make them available under very controlled conditions. And uh, we're, we're uh, working with a uh, company Thinkware, or Fourth Valley GIS as they used to be, who are customising the new application that will go live hopefully in, in January, initially with OS mapping from the last 15 years, but with other data sets soon to be added. We've also, just a final recent project, collaborated with Archaeology Scotland on an educational website encouraging maps for historic use, which we hope will launch in the, the next month. Uh, my colleague, uh, Chris, in the audience, uh, maintains a very active uh, Twitter um, feed, which um, provides updates, not just about us, but about other uh, mappy things. And uh, I've also uh, ended with some contact details, the URL of our website, and just to say thank you to the various people, some of whom are in the audience who supported us, as well as my colleagues Daniel and uh, Chris who do all of the real work behind this, and I just present it at uh, meetings like this. Thank you. the technology and processes and, uh, and really encourage and share information. It has to be said, not many other libraries in the UK actually want to develop this technology, or if they do, they don't really see it as a map library job. It's perhaps another department or another area. The British Library in London probably have the most active uh, web presence in terms of historical mapping, maybe the National Records of Scotland, and then it tends to be the odd uh, council archive in particular areas. And uh, whilst we're always keen to share information, sometimes um, it, it requires quite specific communication to do something practical. But all of our software is all open source, and it's very easy for any developer, someone with a bit of JavaScript knowledge, to read how we've done it, to copy bits of code. And uh, one of the things we like about it isn't a package that you need to sell someone else. It's very much, you can take the bits that you want or just use it in, in quite a small way. And so, yeah, we're, we're very keen to uh, care and share, really. But um, I think there isn't a, a very active map curator community really doing exactly the same thing. Um, have you ever thought about, uh, no, uh, historical maps are rusted, have you ever thought about making any of those maps into vector maps in an automated or non-automated way? Yeah, it's a really good question actually, and one of the things I didn't mention is that at the uh, State of the Map 
conference in Birmingham, there was a presentation on open historical map as an idea which I was chatting to a few people about at lunch and it seems quite an embryonic idea but the idea being that there would be open street map like vectors for historic features and it's something actually that we have only done in a very small way. We had a project a couple of years ago called Visualising Urban Geographies on our website where we traced the boundaries relating to features in Edinburgh, it was focusing very much on Edinburgh, and you can still see the results, so we traced property boundaries and we, we also traced the chronological map of Edinburgh showing its expansion over time, but it was very much to fly the kite and illustrate the idea, and we didn't really have the resources for doing more than that, but the project actually has had more funding uh, in a new guide, it's just beginning now is what's called the MESH project, or Mapping Edinburgh's Social History, and it's run by Richard Roger in the History Department. And over the next three years, it's specifically trying to vectorize a lot of historical information relating to Edinburgh. And one way of doing that might be by tracing features. I think there's a lot of development, which I'm not that up to speed with, that will try to automatically recognize features. I remember someone over lunch who was saying that, that there's quite practical applications that need some work, but are still you know, quite clever ways of vectorizing content. And I think that's, that's a really big area that will develop fast in the next few years. And it's something we'd like to encourage through our maps, because really as background raster mapping, it's nice to look at, but it's not intelligent. And if we could do that, then yeah, it would allow a lot more applications, yeah. I'm just curious about archiving digital data. Um, yeah, no, it's a, it's a very good question that, and there's actually, I'm lucky that there's a quite active research community looking at all the formats for geospatial data around the world, particularly in the States, there are geospatial data repositories, we've done a lot of work on the preferred formats and um, kind of general principles, but at the moment it's quite an early area of where a lot of people have invested time, essentially it's trying to ensure the readability of content so that things are migrated on at the right time so that we don't lose them. And obviously certain principles like the openness of the data to the non-proprietary methods and the more universal the formative, the, the format is can help an awful lot in terms of ensuring that there'll be continuing software that can read things. It's an area we've given attention to with Ordnance Survey, digital data, which we've actively received and we've got a responsibility to archive for the future. And we're still at the stage where there's enough software around that can read the data in a current format. It's not a, a major worry, but it will require active management far more than paper mapping ever used to. This whole idea of needing to, to keep abreast of technology and keep it alive and keep it, keep it usable. So yeah, we're hoping that there'll be a lot more attention given. Really, around the world, so lots of the the larger uh, Western European countries uh, are very active in terms of preserving digital information and hopefully a lot of shared information will pass about that as well. well thank you.